Well, welcome everyone. My name is Lindsay Spear. I'm the campaign director for Heat Smart CNY and work with Alliance for a Green Economy. And I'm joined here with Barb Henza tonight, but with Cornell Cooperative Extension. Um, we're gonna be talking about the many different incentive programs to help afford heat pumps and energy efficiency improvements for your homes. Um, we talk about this in our Heat Pumps 101 uh, usually, but we go over it pretty quickly. We'll go a little bit more in depth tonight um, and keep the heat pumps 101 to a minimum. So if you uh, are here and want to learn more about air source heat pumps and geothermal heat pumps and all of that, um, and you missed our most recent heat pumps 101, you can find that on our YouTube page. Uh, look for Heat Smart CNY. So start off with a brief introduction of Heat Smart CNY. Um, we are a project of Alliance for Green Economy and the Central New York Regional Planning and Development Board. Uh, we serve Onondaga, Cayuga, Cortland, Madison, and Oswego counties. And I want to recognize that we are on Onondaga Nation land here um, and appreciate the stewardship of that land that they have shown for thousands of years. Um, in particular, they taught me what geothermal heat pumps were when they installed them in their fire barn. So there's a connection there. Um, we've done over 14, or we've done over 130 events, um, outreach, education, tours, workshops, uh, tabling over the past four years. Um, we've got over 1,400 participants, and to date, we've got 130 homes improved and counting. So it's a real pleasure to work with everyone, and it's really fun to see people delight in having more comfortable homes. Barbara, would you like to introduce yourself? Um, hi, I'm Barb Henza with Cornell Cooperative Extension in Cortland County. I don't know how much you know about Cooperative Extension. Uh, we were actually established in Cortland in 1913 as part of the Smith Lever Act. We um, are affiliated with the New York State Land Grant University, which would be Cornell University. Um, they are our overall administrator. Um, our main role as a county cooperative extension is to connect campus and the communities to take the research that is generated at the campus level and bring it down to the community where it can be put to use in basically projects or uh, for my area, which is energy and financial management, some planning and work on putting yourself in a better financial position. And I think our mission statement says it all. We put knowledge to work in pursuit of economic vitality, ecological, and I, you can read this, <laughs> ecological sustainability and social well-being. We bring local experience and research-based solutions together, helping New York State families and communities thrive in our rapidly changing world. So this is just a perfect fit for our mission. So tonight we're going to do um, a number of pieces to this presentation. I wanted to start off with a brief overview about why energy efficiency is such a big deal right now. Uh, we'll talk about the basics of energy efficiency, um, you know, the technologies and terms that we'll be covering as we talk about the financial aspects. Um, we'll talk about the money, uh, the financing and incentives available for heat pumps. And then we'll do a deeper dive into programs for insulation and energy efficiency. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about future opportunities. Um, we had actually hoped we'd have more details to share with you on some upcoming opportunities, but none of them are actually live and available yet. So I'm going to hint at things and I encourage you to take the advice that I gave you. Um, and yeah, how do we write them? So why is energy efficiency a big deal? It's one of the few things that we can do that helps at both the very local level to improve our own lives, um, to, to you know, reducing air pollution in our communities from old power plants, that if we use our energy more efficiently, we don't have to use those peaker power plants, to you know, trying to do what we can to stop climate change. But at the very local level, we're looking at you know, how do we improve the quality of life in people's homes and the health impacts that people have because of that. Um, some of the issues get addressed by improving the insulation and air sealing and other health and safety issues in the home um, include reducing high energy bills, which a lot of people are feeling right now, um, managing moisture in the attic or basement, poor indoor air quality, excessive dust, condensation on the windows, mold and mildew, drafty areas, hot and cold rooms, um, 
and especially concerning is uh, you know carbon monoxide or backdrafting. A good home performance contractor can look at all of your home and it's a system, the homes are a system, and can help you find out how um, some aspects might be affecting others and help you make your home much more comfortable and much more healthy for you. On the global level, um, the main source of greenhouse gases in New York State is a, this is a chart from the Department of Environmental Conservation. Um, you can see here buildings account for 30% of our greenhouse gas emissions. Now, thankfully, New York State is also a climate leader and through the, community, or the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act passed a couple of years ago, um, we've really made some commitments to changing our energy system um, for the far better. So we're looking at 70% renewable energy production by 2030, um, zero emission electric sector by 2040. And the piece that's of course important with the buildings is this commitment to 125 trillion British thermal units reduction in energy by 2025. What does that mean? It means a lot of homes. Um, specifically, Governor Hochul in the State of the State address um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, set an additional goal of 2 million homes that are either fully electric with heat pumps or electric ready by 2030. So that kind of sets the stage for the big push for why some of the programs we're going to talk about exist. New York State is committed by law to meet these goals, um, which is good for the climate and it's good for us, but it means a big change. So one of the first steps with improving the energy efficiency of homes is doing an energy audit or having a contractor come and just evaluate your home. Um, these are some of the tools that they use. Uh, an infrared scan can help basically see into the walls and see where the heat might be coming through, through cracks, through um, gaps, um, through lack of insulation. The blower door test um, uses, uh, basically creates a brief pressurization or depressurization of the home um, to find out how leaky the house is. Um, it's a really neat piece of equipment. Um, and then of course, just the visual aspects of looking through the house and looking at where the insulation is. Key ways of addressing insulation and improving that. Um, you'll see spray foam used on attic slopes sometimes. You'll see uh, cellulose in attics. That's a really common way of doing it. Um, spray foam into holes and openings and uh, electrical boxes, lighting recesses. This keeps the air from leaking up through these holes into a attic. Um, you see blown in cellulose into walls and um, a common place for addressing uh, air leakage is actually on the rim joist. This is the section above your foundation, uh, between the foundation and the first floor, usually in a lot of the old homes, it's just a piece of wood between the inside and the outside there. Putting insulation in the rim joists area is incredibly important and makes a huge difference. That actually is a picture of my own basement. Um, heat pumps. So I'm going to do a really brief how heat pumps work. Um, heat pumps work by capturing the energy that's in the environment around us and going through a really uh, technologically neat um, compression cycle that basically pumps up the temperature to what you need it to be in the home. So it's even when it's really cold outside uh, with a cold climate air source heat pump, it's capturing the energy from the air around it, condensing it, putting it to the temperature that you want in your house. In the summertime, they work in reverse and it pumps the heat outside. Geothermal heat pumps, do the same thing, only they're doing a heat exchange with the ground, which is a usually a stable 40 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit in our area. It's very, very efficient. Heat pumps are two to five times more efficient than electric resistance heating and um, more efficient than the you know, gas furnaces. You know, gas furnace, the best it can be is 96% efficient, for example. Um, so that's one of the basic things. Here's what some of them look like. The top two here, this is an outdoor unit for a ducted air source heat pump. You can see a ducted air source heat pump. It just ends up in your basement and connects with your ductwork, just where your furnace was. 
Um, there's also what they call ductless mini split air source heat pumps. And so they, this is one of the outdoor units here. And then you can see there's a variety of indoor units and those work great in homes that don't currently have duct work. Ground source heat pumps, there's two major kinds that we see installed locally. We see vertical uh, loop systems and horizontal loop fields. And it really depends on your home um, and particularly the land around it, which option makes the most sense for you. Um, and you can see here again, this is the indoor unit. It's in the basement and it looks like a slightly larger furnace. There's also heat pump water heaters. And the way that these work is they're doing air exchange at the top, this black unit on top here is pulling air in from the basement and basically taking the heat that's in that air, condensing that and putting it into the water. Um, one of the added benefits is that it does do a little bit of dehumidification of your basement. It does make the basement a little bit colder, but not significantly so. One of the real benefits of air, so all the heat pumps, is that they are helping people control their energy costs because they're so much more efficient than any of the other heating systems. They reduce the operating costs significantly. And so we're seeing a lot of people come through the Heat Smart program who are retirees, for example, who have, you know, they've built up a little bit of a nest egg. They want to invest in their homes, they want to control their energy costs into the future. Um, as they are now on more limited incomes. And so they'll invest in the homes to improve the energy system with heat pumps. Here's a good example of the comparison of heating costs with heat pumps. Um, you can see electricity is the most expensive way of heating a home, just straight resistance electricity. It's basically, you know, turning your house into a giant toaster is what that is. Um, propane is the second most expensive. Heating oil is the third most expensive. Natural gas is down there. Um, air source heat pumps come in around natural gas in terms of their operating costs. Ground source heat pumps come in way low. And with ground source heat pumps, the cooling costs in the summer are almost non-existent because heat wants to move where it's hot to where it's cold and the ground is always colder than the air. You see, you know, from electric, you can see it's a 250% reduction to air source heat pumps and a 400% reduction to ground source heat pumps. And one of the other benefits is that it minimizes the cost fluctuations of heating. You can see here, this is over the past, um, sorry, I can't even, there we go. It's from about 2002 up through 2021. Some of the heating costs for different fuels. Um, propane is the black line, oil is the red line, gas is the blue line, and geothermal is the green line. Um, air source heat pumps would be similar to geothermal, just a, a bit higher. Um, and you, know, you can see the energy costs fluctuate immensely with fossil fuels. And this is one way of controlling those fluctuations. So there are a number of incentives that exist and these haven't changed that much, um, not since the last couple of years. So there are utility rebates through National Grid and NYSEG RG&E, unfortunately, um, there is some smaller rebates available for the municipal electric um, utilities, but nothing on the scale of this size. Um, so for National Grid, NYSEG, and rg &E, they are doing incentives of $1,000 per 10,000 BTU hours, um, which is a unit of measuring the heat of a furnace. Um, so that ends up being about $2,200 to $5,400 per house, the way we've been seeing the, uh, them spent. Um, with ground source heat pumps, you're looking at $1,500 per 10,000 BTU hours. You're looking at $2,300 to $8,300 um, off the cost of a geothermal system. And with heat pump water heaters, it's a, re a straight rebate of $700. Now, for to access these, you have to go through a qualified installer. Um, these installers have jumped through the hoops and work with the utilities. They know how to design the systems that will meet the utility uh, standards. Um, and the nice news is that they actually will handle all the paperwork too. With a heat pump water heater, you can get that if you buy a heat pump water heater from, say, Lowe's and Home Depot and have someone install that, like a 
conventional electrician or plumber. Um, you can apply for that yourself, um, but that's the only one that that's possible for. Um, there's also federal tax credits. Now here's one of the changes. There was a rebate for air source heat pumps and heat pump water heaters. That ended at the end of December. Um, there may be some version of it that comes back into play. And often when they do that, it's often retroactive to the last time it was um, operational. But it's really hard to say what happens at the federal level these days. Um, there still is the federal tax credit for geothermal systems. That is 26% of the system cost um, after any utility rebate. Uh, and that goes through the end of this year. And then in 2023, it drops to 22% as the uh, rebate. So if you're thinking about geothermal, this is a good time to do it. And um, if you have a large commercial building, there's also incentives available for the utilities for that. But I think we're mostly all residential here, so I'm going to gloss over that for tonight. I realized I hadn't talked about financing options in a long time, and so I wanted to go into those with more detail. Um, NYSERDA actually has added a couple new um, financing options available. So I've talked in the past about the on-bill recovery loan and the smart energy loan. Um, and the interest rates on those are 3.49 to 6.99%. It's the interest rates are lower for low to moderate income households. Um, or if you live in an area that is, th there are certain areas based on census tracts that um, are geo eligible for the lower interest rate. So if you live in a less wealthy neighborhood, um, you should definitely put your information into the NYSERDA, put your address into the NYSERDA website. You can see that at the bottom of the slide and uh, check and see which interest rate it gives you. Um, the terms on these are um, $1,500 to $2,500 uh, as the amount with a loan term of five, 10 or 15 years. Um, with the on-bill recovery loan, the loan payment is paid through your utility bill. Uh, the balance, balance can transfer to a new owner that way if you were to change your home. Um, but you must own the home and your name must be on the utility account. Um, we see our installers more frequently offering the smart energy loan. Um, that's, again, the same terms. Um, but if you sell the property, you remain responsible for the loan. Most people, you know, account for that in their selling price. So they get the money back when they sell the home and they just pay off the loan. Uh, again, you must own the home. There's also now the Renewable Energy Ta Tax Credit Bridge Loan. <clears throat> and sorry, um, yeah, yeah. So that's an interest rate of, again, it's the 3.49 to 6.99%, um, but it is a very short-term loan of two years. So if you are doing a geothermal system, for example, and you are planning on getting the tax credit, but you don't have the money up front to kind of wait until then, you can do the short-term loan for it. And then if the amount of work that you want to do is more than $2,500, there is a companion loan, which is at the higher interest rates, um, but then it can be combined with the other loans to give you more money to work with. So now we're going to go talk just about the energy efficiency programs that are available. And I'm going to turn this over to Barb. Unless you want me to carry these slides. No, um, I had muted because my phone decided to ring. That's a problem. <laughs> yeah, so sorry. Um, there are three main programs that we work with. Um, we work with the Empower program, the Assisted Home Performance program, and the Comfort Home. Empower is the one that is a um, set to be at 60% of the, I thought it was the state median It income. actually is state median income. This I'm is, like, wait, what? <laughs> you're right, it's state um, median income. Okay, it is a state median, median income. So you can see from the chart what the levels are for that. It is the same um, level for HEAP benefits for your SNAPs, um, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program benefits. Um, so it's pretty consistent if you're talking or for me, when I'm talking to someone, 
I ask them because they're not sure. And I'll say, well, do you get heat? Then they, they, if they say yes, I know we're good without making them dig up their tax returns. And then the assisted home performance, um, this one started out last year at 120% of area median income. And then in August, it dropped back to 80%. And that's of our area median income. So these are the charts we use, especially for me when I'm working with people who are calling me to see how, what programs are available to them, what do they need to do. I have to first figure out where they fit in this program. Um, what's not listed here is the comfort home, and that's because that's for everybody. It's for what they call the market rate customer, um, but basically anybody in the state will fit and get that. So, okay, next slide. Okay, Let's, okay. okay this is the map for the geo eligibility for Empower, and that would be where the income required ability requirements are waived. So again, the email address to check your address. And one thing I would say when someone goes in, uh, maybe they're doing the online um, application for residential programs. If they check that they receive HEAP or they're geo eligible, what will happen is that this, the program will then put a zero in for your income. Because I've had a couple calls in the last two weeks where people were concerned that they then could not enter their income. So in those cases, once you check that box on the application, okay, they know that you've already jumped through the hoops, you're eligible based on income, they're not gonna make you do it again, which is good. Because some of those things, there's been an ongoing conversation about which line of the federal tax return do you use? And I've heard line nine or line 11, take your pick. Um, okay, question for the household size. There is a chat question. Matt, Dennis, yes, I've heard a line 11 to Dennis. Um, but then I thought there was a question, question at household. How many people in the apartment you live in, not in the building? Um, so it, it would be the apartment, okay? <laughs> I just saw the question so quickly. Um, but you would have to look at the income of all of the people in that apartment, okay? Empower provides incentives for home energy measures to the, el to the eligible households. The whole process starts with the home energy assessment. Uh, Lindsay gave an excellent description of it. I got the opportunity to be home when they were doing the energy assessment at my house and probably drove the poor contractor nuts because I said, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Um, I wanted to know what they were doing. And then the results of that assessment is what is going to drive what they're going to recommend for your home, which qualified energy improvements are provided. And they're going to look at what will give you the best reduction in your cost and, com and increase in comfort. For Empower, they can cover up to $10,000 in improvements at 100% of the cost. One question I have had many times, usually it's from senior citizens, um, and most of them have told me it's a family member who thinks I'm trying to scam them, that the state would put a lien against their home. And no, that does not happen. There is no lien or anything against the home with Empower. Some of the improvements they do, you'll see a lot of insulation and air sealing. If it's a really old refrigerator in the home, they will replace it with a more energy efficient one. Um, there are, everybody would get the lighting and that is LED bulbs. If you haven't already switched out to LED bulbs, this is a good opportunity. Um, I'm probably the people who are on have already switched out. I know they, um, they caught me, I had one incandescent bulb left and it was the one in the garage that the light was never turned on which is probably why i never changed it um and it may include heat pumps Lindsay and i had a conversation on that i skipped a line um both homeowners and renters can take part in this program that has been a big misconception people thought that they could not take part in the program if they rented you do have to have the permission of the landlord because it is his property. But usually we, you can make the case to the landlord, it's improving their property. 
It will help their tenants because most of the time here, at least in Portland County, we've seen that the shift has been as the cost of utilities have gone up, suddenly they're no longer included in rent. So for a tenant, if you could make that apartment more um, cost effective for the utilities, then that can help them to make this attractive to the landlord. That will allow them to make that rent payment on time, as well as they can take care of other of their needs, uh, food for one, um, maybe they have to have some medications. So the whole goal is to get this more affordable. The next. Um, who qualifies as it's qualify you based on your household income. And that takes into account the income of everyone living in that household. Uh, if there is there is something with students. I don't think they count that uh, below a certain level. The 60% of state of median income for a family of four is 62,988. So that's pretty good income. They can own or rent. They do not have to um, you know, be the land owner. They can be the tenant. And I have seen or heard about them doing one side of a duplex and not the other. So it doesn't even have to be all the tenants in that building. For Empower, they are looking at houses which can, or units which contain one to four units. If it's more than that, there's a different program. Um, they receive certain benefits, HEAP, SNAP, public assistance, or geographic location. Consumers who qualify for Empower will also qualify for weatherization. And that is a different pot of money that is federal funding. So it is possible for someone to have services under weatherization and also under Empower. Okay, assisted home performance is for moderate income consumers at or below the 80% of the area median income, which is 83,984 for a family of four. It also offers a free home energy assessment. So they come in and they do the blower door test, the whole look, walk through and testing. Okay, this is where it gets a little confusing because it will cover up to 50% of the cost up to $5,000 of energy improvements, such as insulation and a heating system. The consumer is expected to match NYSERDA investments. So the project could be up to $10,000, $5,000 from NYSERDA, $5,000 from the consumer. Um, what if it looks like it's going to be an $11,000 project? In that case, New York State, NYSERDA still will only pay $5,000. The additional $1,000 would have to come from the consumer. So when they came in to do my home for assisted home performance, I had a conversation with the person who was doing the audit and said, I wanted to keep it just to $10,000 or below. So you can work with them as they're doing this. They're gonna ask you a lot of questions. Um, they asked me, what do you want us to focus on? And for me, that was easy, the attic and the crawl space. So it, there you have a little more input with assisted home performance. Um, there are also low interest loans that are available to cover the amount that the consumer is expected to match. Okay. Okay. Um, comfort homes. This is available to what they call market rate consumers. And a market rate consumer is one who doesn't fit in either the low or moderate income category. Um, basically, they're just over the income guidelines for the other programs. It can provide incentives up to 4,000 for certain insulation, air sealing, and window improvements. There are additional incentives for heat pump installations. And I will say um, Empower uh, does not do windows or doors. Those are things that I keep getting asked or someone will call me and say, I really need windows. But if they're an Empower customer, they're not gonna do windows. So, it becomes, this would be where they would get the money for 
the uh, windows. So I have to be the bad guy who says, no, sorry, don't do windows. Um, so next slide. This are the packages that they have out there for comfort homes. You can see that for the first one, if they come, if you seal and insulate the attic and the rim joist, the incentive is $1,000. If you do a little better than that, you seal and insulate attic and rim joist um, and insulate the walls and the floors, um, that's $2,500. Seal and insulate attic and rim joists, insulate the walls and floors, and retrofit windows to Energy Star. That is an incentive of four thousand dollars. And the comp you do have to use one of the NYSERDA uh, certified installers. They will help you with those applications. Uh, and there was a question of that was there. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be retroactive to a. Usually for this one, I'm not sure, I have to say, because you're doing it. I'm gonna to have to find that out, Lindsay, whether it can be retroactive to work done in a previous year. No, it can't. Yeah, I didn't think so. I haven't had anybody do comfort homes. Now that said, my understanding is that if you've already done like your attic and the rim joists, and then you want to do additional work, you could apply for comfort home and they'll basically give you some credit for what you've already done. So you can get up, you could get the higher level of incentive. Hmm. Um, and Matt, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on that, but. Yeah. Uh, no, you're, you're just about right. It, it's a little confusing, but yes, they, yeah. they do. They do have a, a little bit of leeway if, if, if the measures are, to a point of acceptability and you want to do like the next level then then yeah you can you can do it but it yeah it's it's it, it's a little confusing yeah and i'm <laughs> gonna hit at with a question what if you seal and insulated the attic and rim joists um and your windows are already wind energy star but you haven't insulated the walls <laughs> so um <laughs> If that if that is the case, if they are, if everything but the like uh, for that best package, if everything but one thing is done, mm -hmm. um, they should allow the full incentive because you've already you've already done those other things and you just need to do the one thing. Like if you had a if the house, the attic, the rim joist, the walls and all were good, and you want to do the windows, um, mm -hmm. they should give you that four thousand dollar incentive toward the windows. So yeah, to, to your point, it is. Now, again, it, it, there's a lot more wiggle room with Comfort Homes than any of the other programs. So it's a lot It's a lot more gray. Yeah, and that's usually why when somebody calls me on the Comfort Homes or uh, <clears throat> on any of these programs, if they start getting into a little bit of the gray area, I suggest they talk to one of the contractors, especially if they're already working with you, mm -hmm. because you guys really do know the programs and when they make the changes. And I can tell you the, the comfort homes people, it's it's still a pilot test program and they really yeah. want to make it successful. So they're they're really letting us do a lot of stuff. Oh, I may be calling you. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally I did not insulate the walls when I did assisted home performance. I'd already got <clears> the <throat> windows. So um, some of the additional financial benefits, uh, we've already touched on some, which is the federal energy credit. Um, it's 26% of the cost, the cost that the consumer pays for the energy measures. So you have to take, if it's a, like a $24,000 system, but I'm just tossing a number I can easily divide my head. Um, and you receive, uh, say, 12,000 in incentives, you would only get the credit on that. 12,000 that you were responsible for because the IRS doesn't like to give you credits on what other people pay. Um, geothermal heat pumps and solar are on um, allowable for some federal credits. You claim it on your income taxes. And it is a lovely form called the 5695 and then it goes on to the new schedule three. Um, I would say if you're interested in one of these, talk to somebody who really understands how the tax works. It is not a refundable credit, which means you will only get the credit up to the amount of tax that is owed. 
but it can be carried forward if you cannot claim the full credit. So that's the good news. Uh, and once you filled out the form, um, I think you carry it. Um, it ref you, it's one of those where you have to keep your returns um, and use them every year because it's gonna show you what you have to carry forward from one year to the next. Uh, and if you lose that, mm -hmm. Hopefully, the pro, whoever did your returns or if you used software online, you should be able to find the form. Um, and the amount of credit, as we noted, drops for work done in 2023. There are some New York State credits, which are 25% of solar energy equipment, up to 5,000. And that also can be carried over five years. So if you didn't owe the tax, did, couldn't get the full benefit in the first year, all in one year, um, you can carry it forward over five years. That's under current tax law. I will not be responsible for what they may do next year or the year after, so. Uh, okay. So we want I to go into a couple of examples um, of products that have been done. So this is one of the projects, this was in Syracuse. Um, it was a tenant that qualified for Empower, the landlord applied for um, the product to be done. So we were working with both the tenant and the landlord. Um, they did two inches of spray foam insulation in the base, on the basement walls and in the rim joists. Um, they put, so while they didn't replace doors, they do weather stripping and the door sweeps on doors on the Empower program. So that's important to note. Um, and then they also will also do um, health and safety improvements, uh, like making sure that there's a combination fire alarm and carbon monoxide detector in the um, in the residence. Um, and also these handy dandy little air seal covers for the filter slots in the furnace, um, which just as a FYI, um, we should probably all be doing this. It helps make the efficient the furnace work more efficiently and prevents pollutants from coming in from our basements into the furnaces. And they're available for like ten dollars at the Home Depot or any of the local uh, stores. So, um, you know, we don't necessarily have to be empower qualified to do that for ourselves. Um, this is another project example um, out in Earlville. Um, that basement there was um, they. I have seen basement windows replaced because hmm. um, often those are really, really bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, but I, I've not seen any of the Empower projects having upstairs windows replaced at this point. Mm -hmm. um, so basement windows, um, there's a Bilco door that was insulated. Um, when we say a Bilco door, think about like, you know, Dorothy running from the tornado to get to the basement. It's one of those doors that goes to the outside and straight into the basement. Mm -hmm. um, that's a common source of air filtration into a basement. Um, they did a, on the basement wall, they did a dimple, dimple mat, which helps keep the um, any moisture issues from getting to the insulation and then two inches of spray foam. And then they replaced um, fiberglass that had sort of <clears throat> disintegrated with uh, spray foam on the rim joists. This is a big house, um, one of those big old rambling rural houses. They had six outer doors. So they did weather stripping and door sweep on all of those. They got a program of the little thermostat. Um, the dryer got properly vented for the first time. Um, again, carbon monoxide and smoke detector and LED lights. Uh, and the cost of the Hummer was nothing to the homeowner. Um, I will note that, so I saw a question in the chat, you know, do you have to do all the things recommended? Um, within power, uh, the contractors are putting together a package that will meet all the program requirements for Empower uh, to allow them to do the necessary things for your house. Um, and some of them are mandated that they do. Um, so I'll let Matt later on talk about more details if you'd like to. Matt is one of the uh, installers with Halco um, and he knows these programs even better than I do, but um, <laughs> we will get into that later. Um, one of the things that they do for almost all the Empower projects that they give, they do in LED lights. And um, I would encourage people to give LED lights a try. They are actually really good now. And um, let them run. You'll be really surprised about how much energy savings you have. One of the things that contractors are getting dinged on is when they've, um, they have, there's, um, you know, the contractors do these programs, 
they sort of will do a spot check on a number of them and they'll come in and they'll see and make sure that the things that were installed were installed. Um, be nice to the contractor, make sure you leave the LED lights in because that's one of the places where they're getting dinged when people take out the LED light bulbs. Just give them a try. Yes. <laughs> be nice to contractors. And um, we have a question, um, are LED lights better than CFCS? Uh, yes. Yes. yes CFLs, definitely. absolutely. They are mm -hmm. more efficient than CFLs and they don't, so um, the compact fluorescent light bulbs, they actually have mercury in them. You do yeah. not want to break one of those in your home. Um, so LEDs are safer and they're more energy efficient and they come in ranges of uh, colors. So you can get like a bright white. Um, but you can also get like a soft white, which is more of a yellowy color, which is closer to the incandescent lights that we like. Um, and then this is Barb's home that she's going to talk about. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, I went through the assisted home performance program so that I would understand how it worked. Um, and they're just telling me the rest of the people are leaving the office. Um, we have a home in the city of Portland. It was built in 1964. It is a ranch home and it's roughly 900 square feet. Um, there was no, when we bought it, there was very little attic insulation. There was none in the crawl space because in the city of Cortland and a lot of Cortland County, if you go down very far uh, to get a full basement, you guarantee a sump pump or you're gonna have a swimming pool. So there are a lot of raised ranches in my area, but not mine. Um, so they came in, they did the uh, um, energy assessment with the blower door test, all of that. They looked through the house and I, as I said, I talked with them, um, the company who I went with and said that I really felt we needed to focus on the attic and the cellar, the crawl space. Um, we also determined very quickly that by drilling a hole and putting a camera in, that the exterior walls do not have insulation either. But again, this was 1964. I don't know what the fuel oil cost was back then, but it wasn't a whole lot. So they really weren't that concerned. And also we had already replaced the windows because the ones that were in there were a disaster. But with the attic, they went up in and they put in 10 inches of cellulose, which took it to approximately R49. And when we talked earlier, it got me thinking, so I did some research. What we put in when we purchased this home in 1979 was the standard six inch baths, which were about R, I think they were rated at an R18, now it's about an R19. So by adding the 10 inches of cellulose, we really got a lot of insulation added. They also um, did some ventilation work on my attic because I have no idea why they thought this was a good idea in 1964, but the bathroom fan went up to the attic and that's it. It emptied all of that hot, moist air into our attic. So they vented that out of the attic. Uh, they also extended the PVC furnace intake pipe to the outside. And again, this is something, the furnace was a high efficiency one that was put in several years ago. I have no idea why they did not do that, did not take it to the second, to the level it should have been, but they rectified that. And then they added gable vents to it. The crawl space actually was the most expensive piece of this project. It was a complete encapsulation. Uh, they have a clean space moisture barrier over the floor, two inches of closed cell polyurethane spray foam over the walls and rim joist and the vents that were there to let air go basically through the crawl space roughly all year. Those were actually covered up when they did this. So the total cost for this project was $9,980. My investment was $4,990. And I, out of curiosity too, um, we got, I am on a budget plan with NYSIG because I live in the city of Corthland and I get to pay two different utilities. NYSIG is my natural gas supplier and just checking from last year to this year, couldn't have worked out any better. Um, it was average daily temperature for both periods of 27 degrees Fahrenheit. And our average daily use was two therms 
this year. It was three therms last year. So there is very definitely some cost savings. And I may um, have asked Matt because I know what our value means, but I have all kinds of trouble explaining it <laughs> to people. Um, it's the uh, yeah, so somebody could explain R value better. The higher the R value, the better. Uh, Won't well, we save that to the end? <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I know why it's good, but to actually explain the mechanics of it, I usually have to go in and double check it again to make sure I'm getting it right. So uh, I think that was it, what we were gonna do for this. Yeah. Right, and I want to just throw in a couple of market rate project examples. Um, so, you know, one of these was a home in Cuga County. It used to be on oil. They switched to a ductless air source heat pump system. Um, so you can see just the straight cost of the system for that. They had a utility rebate off of that. Total cost for them out of pocket was about $13,000. And they spent about $10,000 on insulation and air sealing. Um, again, with the Comfort Home Program, they could have Got another, you know, two to four thousand dollars off of their project. This one they didn't replace windows, so it would have been about two thousand um, dollars. And this is in the geothermal project. This is in Manlius. Um, the initial cost of geothermal was sixty-five thousand um, <clears> dollars. <throat> that does include vertical drilling in a suburban neighborhood. So you've got limited space. You couldn't do a long horizontal loop field. Um, you needed to go vertical. Um, that does impact the cost of the geothermal system. Um, at the time, they were on the nice CERTA incentive, um, which then transferred to be the utility incentive for similar amounts. Um, and then they also took the federal tax credit, bringing it down to about $40,000. Um, and they also installed solar on here. They also did insulation work, but didn't have the cost on that. So again, um, that's a project that could have gone through Comfort Home. Um, and I wanted to say, looking to the future, um, you know, you have both the state and the federal government making commitments to dealing with climate change. And some of that includes a lot of energy efficiency work. Um, there's been money in the, um, in the infrastructure bill that uh, is directed to local communities for energy efficiency. They'll probably come through weatherization, but we, again, we're waiting on the details. Um, we are, you know, we expect to hear a number of other things for, from New York state, um, both for low to moderate income households. Um, if it's, what we're seeing is a lot of experimentation. They're trying to figure out what's the right amount of money that really helps the most people yet make the improvements for their homes. Um, some previous examples, I'll go into them in a minute, um, in 2020, there was a brief, brief moment where there was a 0% interest rate available through the Green Jobs Free New York Smart Energy Loan. And uh, we had a whole bunch of people who were had gone through our Heat Smart program, had gotten quotes, had were sitting there considering, going, oh boy, how do I afford this? Um, and they were able to move when that heat pump adder came on, or sorry, the 0% um, the interest, and they basically were able to get that. That money disappeared in two weeks. So the people who moved quickly got it. Um, and then there's also last year a heat pump adder, or they called it, it was a heat pump demonstration study pilot, um, particularly for low to moderate income households. And I'll go through an example in a minute. Um, but looking to the future, what are some things you can do? Um, if you are struggling with your energy bills this year and you, you haven't signed up for HEAP yet, make sure you do that. Um, HEAP is available to many households and um, provides direct payments to the homeowner and the renters um, to help afford your energy bills. Um, and if you are coming across, you know, if you get to the point where you are uh, qualified for emergency HEAP and um, you know, are about to run out of fuel or something like that, um, they will help pay for that fuel. So it's a really good program. Um, and again, if you're qualified for HEAP, you automatically qualify for the Empower program too. So it's one way of documenting that. Um, 
the other thing to note is that all these incentives are changeable. Um, we thought the utility rebates were locked in for five years. We were told that. What we've seen downstate for Con Edison is that their utility rebates got slashed in the last year. And um, starting March 1st, they're going to be much less. Uh, we've been assured by National Grid and NYSEG that they're not planning on doing that anytime soon. I don't know how many years anytime soon means. So again, take advantage <laughs> of the incentives while we've got them. Mm -hmm. Well, Lindsay, the, uh, I know the Con Ed and Central Hudson, the downstate rebates started much higher also. So they I think they were just bringing them in line with everybody else. Okay. They're actually less than what we have up here now, which is why everyone downstate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so here's one example. Uh, and if you want more details on this case study, we're actually doing a in-depth case study on this, a virtual tour. Uh, in next month. Um, but this household, uh, they've got, they did a cold climate air source heat pump system. They were on gas, but they really wanted to, um, you know, do the right thing for the environment. And so they switched over to cold climate air source heat pumps. Um, so they've got two outdoor units and six indoor units. Um, they also installed a heat pump water heater and the total of their whole project was $31,000. It's a lot of money. It's a big investment. Um, off of that came the utility rebate, um, and then they were one of the households that had the quote in front of them and they were able to get that finance at 0%. So it basically ends up financially for them looking like they paid cash. Um, they've got this, the costs spread out over time. And so it keeps their energy costs um, you know, right in line. Um, another one, this was the uh, demonstration study, um, demonstration pilot. And so this was a single woman in Tully, um, getting on in years. And um, it, she was like many people was on fuel oil in a rural area. And like many people was keeping the cost down by using wood to heat her home. But it was getting more and more difficult for her to heat their home with wood. Um, so she qualified for Empower and we were able to get her through the demonstration study. Um, she got a heat pump water heater and got a three ton cold climate air source heat pump system with three units inside and uh, a tall two unit outside. Um, again, switching for oil and she got the electrical panel upgrade also that was needed. Um, and the cost to her was nothing. Um, if it was a straight cost, it would have been about $22,000. Um, and really telling is the energy costs. Um, for heating and hot water with oil, um, the estimated calculation was about $1,800 per year. And after her uh, heating and hot water costs will be about $710 in electric. And that's it. And that will also, I think it might also include cooling, but I can't remember how we did the calculation on that case study. Um, so again, big benefit. And she didn't have cooling before. And uh, you know, as the climate changes, as, as things get hotter, we get, are getting hotter and hotter summers right now. Um, and particularly for our elders, having some cooling is really, really important for simply surviving. So uh, what are the next steps? So one of the key pathways into all of these incentives um, you can actually work with us through HeatSmartCNY. Uh, you can go to HeatSmartCNY.org and hit the enroll button and um, do a little bit of research on the site first. Um, we ask that you pick an installer to work with when you enroll. Uh, we've got five installers and they're all listed on the site. Um, the benefit for doing it this way is that you can talk with the installer, you can talk through the options, and they will help with the paperwork necessary to do the income documentation if necessary. Um, they'll help you through all those bits and pieces. You can also go straight through NYSERDA. Um, they have a combined application online. I've put the link there or the Comfort Home application there. Um, it's really important if you want to choose your installer uh, that you pay really close attention when you do that application. Otherwise, it just randomly assigns you an installer that works through those programs. It might not be one of the ones that works with HeatSmart CNY. 
um, and you may have no control. It's a little bit difficult to switch once you are actually assigned. Um, and you know, income documentation, having your tax return handy is a useful thing when you're doing any of those applications. Um, but you don't need it for enrolling with Heatsmart CNY. Again, the installer will work with you later on that. Um, and uh, at the very least, get on our mailing list. Uh, if you go to About Us on the Heatsmart CNY page and click on newsletter, you can sign up just for the newsletter. And we do updates when there's program changes. We'll let people know, um, you know particularly for those short-term incentives that come out. The way people knew about those is because they were on our mailing list. Um, so I really encourage people to you know, get connected, get informed. And here's our contact information. Um, you can reach me at uh, our phone number. Um, we've got our hotline. You can give me a call at any time. That's the other way you can enroll. If, if any of the forms scare you, if you can feel free to give me a call. We'll talk through your house and we can sign you up with contractors. Um, and there's Barb's contact information. I would say um, with our phone number, uh, the new state law that went into effect the end of last year, which mandates that your providers have some form of scam blocking or notification. We, a few years ago, went internet over, a phone over internet protocol, and people that we had worked with for years were telling us that our number now is being flagged as spam. So, and it's nothing we can do anything about. It's, be, it's their provider who is flagging it as spam. So if you try to call me, or if you see something come through for this number, if you've called and left a message, email always works. Um, my email goes to my cell phone as well. And I will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, I am a community energy advisor for Cortland and Cayuga counties. And that means we are, we are here to help you work through the process. And I'm not afraid to say during the process, gee, I'm not quite sure about that. Let me go back and look on some things because I don't want to give someone um, bad information. Um, I'm usually pretty good when it comes to income taxes. <laughs> I'm reading this as, ah, okay, I'm going to tell the boss that one because he said, I don't know. <laughs> Thanks. Um, we okay. were all complaining. Great. All right, so I'm going to stop the share here and then we'll go to questions and answers.